So now as we continue our look at adaptive immunity, we'll begin the next flowchart by entitling it B cells 1. And if we remember, B cells are lymphocytes, part of adaptive immunity. They're white blood cells that are going to develop, they're going to originate and develop within the bone marrow. And that's why they're named B cells. Again, they will be part of this specific response within adaptive immunity. It's all about specificity here. Let me show you some of the specificity that B cells have and why they have it by looking at a very important structure on all B cells. And that would be the following. B cells are going to have, so BC for B cells, have what is known as a Y-shaped receptor. It's called a B cell receptor, and it has a characteristic Y shape to it. So they have a characteristic Y-shaped receptors. This is shown on figure 43.9, so be sure to take a look at it as we go through the following details. So what makes this Y-shaped receptor so special? Well, first of all, in terms of structure, it is a protein. It consists of four polypeptide chains. Four polypeptide chains, long chains of amino acids, combined together to give you this overall Y-shaped structure. The four chains, the four polypeptide chains, that is, are separated or, let's say, distributed in the following manner. There are going to be two identical, what are known as heavy chains, so we have two out of four covered. Two of them are heavy chains. They're identical to each other. And the other ones are also two identical chains. So we have four out of four covered now. But these are actually called light chains. So two identical light chains. So they look exactly like each other. They look exactly like each other. Different uh, arrangement in terms of where they are on the Y-shaped receptor. And in order to make sure that they stay together, you utilize a very strong covalent bond to combine both of the heavy chains, the heavy chain and light chain, um, and you link them together via what is known as a disulfide bridge. That's a very strong covalent bond, and as we know, covalent bonds are strong because they're equal uh, distribution of electrons via the idea of electronegativity. So that's our idea with the Y-shaped receptor in terms of structure. In addition, in order to understand where the B cell receptor is located, um, it's important to realize that these receptors are not just going to be floating around on the outside of the cell. They're actually very much anchored uh, nicely within the B cell with what are known as a, a transmembrane region. They possess this area of them known as a transmembrane region. This is just a fancy way of saying that they have an anchor because these are going to be the structures that are near actually the ends of the heavy chains. So the heavy chains will be very much close to the membrane. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a transmembrane region, a region that crosses the membrane or goes through the membrane. And this region is what is specifically going to act as an anchor, like I mentioned before. It anchors this receptor and makes sure that it stays where it's supposed to within the B cell plasma membrane. So anchors the receptor in B cell PM4 plasma membrane. In addition, there are two specific regions now. If we go and dissect this idea of structure of the receptors a little bit more, there are two specific regions on the receptor that are important to understand for understanding the overall function of B cells and how they work. So these two regions are as follows. There is going to be a constant region on the B cell receptor, the Y-shaped receptor, and this is abbreviated as the C region. These are go this is going to actually cover portions of the light chain and the heavy chain. So it's going to uh, sort of intertwine between LC and HC, light chain and heavy chain. And this is the specific region that defines which type of B cell you're looking at. More on this definition of a B cell and how we classify B cells when we talk about immunoglobulins in just a second. In addition, the receptors will contain a constant region and also what is known as a variable region. The variable region, appropriately abbreviated as the V region, are going, is going to actually be within the two tips of the Y shape that we have. So if you look at the letter Y, there are two tips right here where the cursor is, and that's going to be the specific area known as the Y, as the variable region. So the two tips of the Y shape represent the variable region. Um, this is a very important region because of the specificity that I've been constantly stating that the adaptive immunity has. How so? 
What we need to realize is that each tip of the Y-shaped receptor, of the B-cell receptor, is going to be the specific area that will be binding, the binding site, the specific binding site for, you guessed it, a specific antigen. And that's really good. We want to make sure that we specifically bind to the correct and specific antigen that may be infecting or causing havoc throughout the body. And that's where we're going to bind it, at this variable tip of the Y region. In addition, each receptor, so because if you look over here, we have two identical light chains and two identical heavy chains, the tips are going to therefore also be identical. So each receptor will present itself with two identical, because there's two sides, one over here, let's say, of the Y and another one over here. Both of these are going to have the identical. They're going to bind to the same exact antigen. This is not going to bind to the separate antigen than that. They're going to both be two identical binding sites antigen binding sites, to be more specific. Okay, so to roughly draw this out for you, what we have is basically um, a Y shape, so we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, so that's one polypeptide chain right here, and that's another polypeptide chain, that's two of them, and then this is going to be another part, and this is going to be another part. So what we have here is the following, four polypeptide chains, one out on the outside, two this one that goes along, this one right here, three and four. The heavy chains are the ones that are obviously longer, aka these two right here in the middle, the ones that are like this. The light chains are on the outside. So actually, let's label this. These are the light chains right here, LC for light chains, and these both are the heavy chains, the longer ones on the insides. Again, they are identical to each other. Where it gets confusing is understanding the regions of the receptors, because now there's going to be a constant region. The constant region is going to span portions of the light chain and the heavy chain. And so what we consider the constant region is basically what I'm going to be bolding right over here. If we bold this area here, this area, I'm going to match it up as much as I can right here, and we bold this area right here, this all here that's bolded, is the area that's going to be the constant region, any area that's bolded. But notice how the tips are just one straight line, not bolded. That's because the tips are going to represent the binding site for the antigen. This area right here and this area right here are going to be identical antigen binding sites that are going to bind to antigen, aka the tips of the Y shape. And what we need to remember is that this is all actually going to be on a cell, right? And therefore, this is the B cell. There's going to be a transmembrane region over here that's going to really anchor this structure. Look at the transmembrane region near the ends of the heavy chains. These are both, of course, heavy chains. Look at the arrows. That's where we sort of bind to it. This is the plasma membrane of the B cell. This is a very poor representation of something that's very, very nicely shown in figure 43.9. So be sure to take a look at that. I think this just gives us a, a general understanding of what we're talking about. Finally, in terms of what we mean by this, the, the defining a B cell, how does a constant region define what a B cell is supposed to be like? Well, that's because there are going to be different B cell classes, different types of B cells based off of the developmental paths that they take and based off of the stimulations that they get from the overall immune response. There are going to basically be five types of immunoglobulins. So this is a new term, immunoglobulins, otherwise known as IgG's. IgG's are going to define a B cell. These are going to be the B cell receptor. The B cell receptor of these five types of B cells that we see are all going to be based off of the distinct heavy chain region. They're all going to have a very different looking, very different structure in terms of their heavy chain region based off of distinct heavy chain, heavy chain constant region. So if you have this constant region within a B cell, you can have different types of constant regions, and the different types of constant regions that are all a part of the heavy chain area are known as immunoglobulins. So there's this IgG, G, capital G, uh, IgG immunoglobulin, aka this is the IgG producing B cell. There's also going to be an IgA, there's going to be an IgM, there's going to be an IgE, and also an IgD. 
So what do these mean? This basically means this B cell has the IgG receptor, and it looks different than the IgA B cell receptor, and it looks different than the IgM B cell receptor, etc., etc. You get the idea. So these are the five different types of B cell classes we have. They're all going to produce five different types of aminoglobulins. Now, the reason why we have these aminoglobulins is because they are eventually going to become or form antibodies. Okay? And that's what we're going to be focusing on in the next video when we talk more about B cell activation.